You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Got an interesting one. I'll just jump into it and explain. Uh, so this is Steven Crowder. If you're unfamiliar, he's a far-right, uh, conservative, political, talking, commentary kind of person or whatever. I know a lot of those words meant the same thing. Uh, he is absolutely terrible in every way. And he's been in the news a little bit recently for some drama that he's been fabricating honestly he was offered 50 million dollars to become a host at the daily wire ben shapiro's daily wire and he turned it down and then put them on blast and did everything he could to destroy the reputation of the daily wire why got me well anyways as it turns out tucker carlson was fired from fox news and this guy had some things to say about it now the title of this like YouTube video that I want to watch is Tucker Carlson's firing the grand plan. There's a whole thing in the beginning of this video. This is an hour long and I intend to watch the whole thing uh, on my unfiltered YouTube channel tomorrow morning. So follow me over there. It's uh, Wednesday and Thursday mornings at uh, 1030 a.m. is when I start streaming. So if you want to see the whole video, it, it gets absolutely crazy. Talks about being blackmailed and extorted by Candace Owens. Oh, man, it's so good. That's at the beginning of this. But I had to skip to the end to find the Tucker Carlson stuff. That's what we're going to start watching. No context necessary. He was just talking about Don Lemon being fired from CNN and how that's different from Tucker Carlson being fired. Anyways, yeah, let's give this a watch. Um, a couple of quick notes I wanted to mention before we actually do watch. Uh, my channel, as some people can probably tell, views are suffering, so I would appreciate it if you guys are regular viewers. If you watch a video, watch from beginning to end. Don't turn it off in the middle. That is one of the factors that YouTube uses to determine how far a video is going to go, or if it's going to, you know, fall and die, basically. If regular viewers watch the entire thing it gets a massive boost so if you guys watch one of my videos try to watch it from beginning to end i would appreciate it anyway all right let's give this a listen with steven crowder see what he has to say as i said he walking into this he's talking about don lemon and how don lemon being fired from cnn is totally different he's about to play a clip from aoc Oh, and uh, while we watch, we're going to play some uh, Mario Maker 2 in the background. Tucker's firing has leftists mm -hmm. like AOC. Ugh. And this is why we say, like, I, I'm not... Don Lemon was fired because his ratings were bad. Let's understand the difference here, right? Don Lemon's ratings were terrible no matter where he went. Prime time. Okay, uh, what is he talking about? Don Lemon is actually, like, he's been with CNN for, like, ever, hasn't he? What does he mean he had bad ratings? He was not terrible. Dude, I hate this level. This is terrible. I mean, Tucker Carlson obviously had better ratings because Fox News is kind of uh, condensed. Uh, every conservative on planet Earth practically watches Fox News, but we'll get into that more in a minute. Keep listening here. Time bad. Morning bad. He was ratings cancer. Yeah. Tucker brought in record ratings. Mm -hmm. He did incredibly well. The issue is the boycotting from giant, le right. giant leftist corporations. So there's a huge difference between the market determining that your show is not successful and deliberately trying to remove someone simply because they have points of view that you dislike. And so that's why it's... Dude, I am sucking. I'm just listening to Steven Crowder as a problem. Aside from that, so is he saying that, is he saying that Tucker was removed from Fox News because... Fox because he had views that Fox disagreed with uh, that doesn't sound right and also um, we don't actually know why Tucker was fired from Fox News yet uh, we'll probably know in the next like few days who knows honestly I thought we'd have known by now we still don't know 
But, uh, yeah, he's just speculating if he's trying to give a reason why Tucker was removed from Fox News. I don't want to say unsettling. It's expected. But, of course, it's aggravating to people like AOC, giddy with excitement at the idea of a corporate censorship. Corporate censorship. No, she's not giddy at the idea of cor- corporate censorship. She, they're going to show the clip of her in a second. But no one is excited for a corporate censorship. But. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is rightfully excited about the fact that Tucker Carlson has lost influence. He, this is the highest that he will ever be. His peak was Fox News. You know, Bill O'Reilly was Fox News' uh, top host for a while, his top-rated guy, or its top-rated guy, for years. And eventually... Oh, that's hard to do sometimes. I'm just not good at it. Eventually, Bill O'Reilly was fired. Um, and that's as high as he ever was when he was the host at Fox. It was only downhill from there. Megyn Kelly, Glenn Beck, all of these people at one time or another were Fox News' top-rated people. And they fell, never to be seen again. So whatever Tucker end up ends up doing after this... Probably a rumble deal. I mean, hell, Russia offered him a position with their propaganda arm. Dead serious. Whatever it is he ends up doing, he'll never be as high as he was on Fox News. Um, now, hang on. Give me a second here. Let me step back a few seconds. Listen to this again. That's why it's, I don't want to say unsettling, it's expected, but of course it's aggravating to people like AOC. Right, talking about AOC. So AOC is giddy, not about the fact that he has been censored by corporate overlords, whatever other garbage like that. Fox News has no obligation to host his show. Um, She's not giddy over that. She's giddy over the fact that Tucker is now on a downswing. He is going to fail inevitably now. Uh, almost certainly. Uh, he, I can't, unless he, like, even Glenn Beck, being the top guy at Fox for a while, tried to start his own network, and it did pretty well, The Blaze. I mean, okay, but it was no Fox News. So that's what she's happy about, that this Russian propagandist who actually had a job offered to him by Russia, by Russia's propaganda arm, no longer has as much influence over society as he used to. Uh, rest assured, though, there will be another host, another extremist, another stochastic terrorist like Tucker to step in. Probably Jesse Waters. That's my guess. Giddy with excitement at the idea of a corporate censorship. Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. Couldn't have happened to a better Jesse. guy. What the hell was that noise? That was weird. By the by, if, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm using a different camera than usual. It's going to deactivate in about 20 minutes or so, or less, actually, maybe soon. I'm just going to have to hit a button on it and reactivate it. So if I go, if I disappear, just my face, rest assured, I'll be back. Liar, whore, um, liar, whore, and you know it. What I will say, though. Dude, are they using, like, a soundboard to mock her right now? Is that what's happening? Is... Go ahead, cutie. Well, Spit it I'm up. very glad that the person that is arguably responsible for the... Give me a margarita. Some of the largest <laughs> driving, some of the most uh, amounts of death threats and violent threats, not just to my office, but to plenty of people across like the, the country. Like the pipe bomb that was never placed um, in the office you were never in? Like like what did she ever claim to have been in a room with a pipe bomb before what's he even talking about right now there were pipe bombs placed at the capitol on january 6th two of them and there's credible though circumstantial evidence that it might have been marjorie taylor green i mean that's neither here nor there there were definitely pipe bombs at the capitol like <laughs> what what are they talking about? They're just propagandists, once again, looking for an opportunity to lie to their audience and confuse them and make her the enemy, once again, as always. Yeah. She was six I'm buildings away. I'm waiting yeah. for the cutscene at the end of a Marvel movie after all the credits have rolled, and then you see like the villain's like hand 
reemerge out to grip, grip over like the end of a building or something. Oh, your throat. But <laughs> dude, are they like laughing about the idea that like she would be strangled? Is that what they're doing right now? Seriously, like what's what? What goes through their heads? How do they arrive at the conclusions that they arrive at? That it's like a good thing or funny or enjoyable to like joke about people dying. I have never in my life. Well, okay. When I was a teenager, I, I was kind of a D bag, but I have never, at, at least as a public figure ever joked about anything like that. Like what the hell is wrong with them, dude? Really? <laughs> Deplatforming works and it is important. And then, and, eyes on the um, road, bitch. <laughs> There you go. She's driving Good right thing. now. Uh, yeah, she says deplatforming works. I completely agree, a hundred percent. If deplatforming didn't work, people wouldn't be as upset about it as they are. If somebody is a terrorist, as I feel Tucker is, they don't need a platform on YouTube or Fox or whatever. Tucker has stoked violence in people that are desperate to find, like create change, you know? Uh, Glenn Beck did this exact same thing. He actually was responsible for a nearly a terrorist attack. It was only stopped by a cop who pulled this guy over. He was on his way to some company or organization, I don't remember what it was, that Glenn Beck had been talking about for like ever about this, how evil it is and how disgusting it is and they're taking your kids and blah, 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 blah. This dude gets pulled over by a cop, had a bunch of guns in his car, and was getting ready to go do something psychotic and was, like, jailed for that because he, like, had the, the intent and the whole nine yards. They're stochastic terrorists at Fox News, Really? And I wish that, like, I love our free speech laws in the U.S. Seriously, I do. They're a little bit too loose, though. If people like Tucker Carlson can get on the air and cause terrorist events the way that he does, they need to be just a little bit more strict. What's going to happen? Oh, no, come on. She has a show first. She appears as though she's one of the, it's actually a good the plebs. She's she driving with her paws, her, yeah. <laughs> her hind legs, her hooves. Her hooves. Thank you. Hooves. Yeah. hooves. Yeah, you guys are all on the ball today. Uh, deplatforming. <laughs> wow, dude. Just why? Like, wh what is. These people just bother me. It works. <laughs> there you go. This is what they want. To be clear. I don't want deplatforming of anyone that I disagree with. I want you to see the different points of view and let yeah. the cards fall where they may. They want people to be removed, and then they never debate the ideas. And by mm, no, I mean, people have been debating these ideas for a long time. But when I hear, like, okay, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, not too long ago, I was I reviewed this video from a KKK Grand Wizard. It's on my channel, on this channel. I talked about this KKK Grand Wizard in 1982 giving an interview with CNN. And the ideas that this Grand Wizard of the KKK was putting forward are the exact ideas word for word coming out of Steven Crowder's mouth or, you know, Glenn Beck's, Bill O'Reilly's, Tucker Carlson's. Hell, Tucker Carlson is even worse than the KKK was in 1982. Dead serious. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't feel the need to debate these ideas. They were debated in 1982 and earlier. And we figured it out. We know. They're bad. They're bad ideas. So deplatform anybody that's a member of the KKK or anybody who is repeating those ideas, deplatform them. I don't want them in jail. I just want their platform yanked. That's all. And uh, there's really no need to debate this stuff anymore. It's weird. Now it's not. Did I mute it? Oh, I did. 
and then they never debate the ideas. And by the way, AOC, the danger here is, even though she can do it, she's already inspiring young leftists across the country with now many others calling for deplatforming, uh, including other people on TikTok and, of course, directing it at prominent right-wing figures. Who? Who's, who is calling for people to deplatform somebody specific? Uh, is there a big movement behind it? And who is being called to be deplatformed? Like, who is being who is being targeted in this deplatforming effort i mean yes she said deplatforming works i'm also in favor of that is there some specific i mean he's claiming that there's like this very specific you know like organized effort to deplatform somebody who i mean he's just making this up entirely so I'm sure y'all have seen Boss Babes AOC's new Instagram story. And I just want to hop on here and say that she is completely right. Deplatforming works. And I think it's time we start using our feminine voices to inspire real change in this world. And if I'm being honest, I don't really know who Tucker Carlson is, nor do I really care. But his 1995 Tommy Hilfiger look, tacky AF. So I think it's a good thing that he's gone. Anyways, I don't think we should stop with him. I think our next target needs to be Elon Musk for three reasons. One, because he's white. Gross. Two. Oh, this is just ridiculous, dude. Come on. This is just a joke. I mean, yeah, there's the occasional person out there that wants to deplatform somebody. But let me tell you what Steven Crowder is doing right now. It's something called. Oh, no, please don't play this. Please don't play this. Okay. <laughs> it's something called the nut picking fallacy. I'll tell you why that would have been devastating in a second. Okay, the nut picking fallacy. Let's talk about this. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Nut picking is the fallacious tactic of picking out and showcasing the nuttiest members of a group as the best representatives of that group, hence, picking the nut. This fallacy is committed when an arguer cherry picks a poor representative of a group to use as an ad hominem against them. For example, anti feminists frequently paint people who support feminism as feminazis by highlighting examples of ridiculous or cringeworthy behavior from select individuals rather than critiquing points addressed in mainline feminist writings. That's why it's different when I criticize the people that I do, because I'm criticizing Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson and Steven Crowder, five million subbies on YouTube. Who are they criticizing? Who are they holding up as a bastion of the left? AOC says deplatforming works. Full stop. Then they find some rando on here taking it even further and saying we need to deplatform Elon Musk because he's white. That's nut picking. And they try to sneak it in as a an honest criticism of a legitimate target of criticism, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She is a public figure. Her ideas are discussed in academic circles. And she's a member of the House of Representatives. She is a legitimate target for criticism. Not this person. And... AOC did not back up the ideas that this person is espousing. This is the nature of propaganda. This is how they sneak the propaganda in. Uh, now, one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I almost played this video. Um, this is God's Not Dead 2. So I've been watching God's Not Dead and God's Not Dead 2. Just This is a quick aside. I'll come back to... Uh, Steven Crowder in a second, but I've been watching these movies on my channels like over the past week or two. And uh yeah, it has not been going well. They uh it, like the company that owns God's Not Dead um basically filed a copyright claim against me and tr so I have like nine different episodes or nine different videos or something like that or maybe 10 across different channels of me like reviewing the movie beginning to end like all of it right and um so i had to go through this process of requesting a like a, a review of the copyright system apparently 
the company just immediately rejected it because it's just the company that has to review this. This the next step is the company. Uh, I file a dispute like a uh, uh, an appeal, and then YouTube apparently. I'm a little unfamiliar with the process still. YouTube apparently reviews it. And if YouTube thinks that there's nothing there, that the company is just being, like, shitheads, then YouTube will put the video back up, and the company's next step is to file documents in court. Now, I'm completely in the clear. There's no chance in hell they're going to file a lawsuit against me for copyright infringement because I'm not infringing on their copyright. This falls within fair use as clear as day. So uh, they're just going to make my life difficult this entire time for who knows how long. Um, so, yeah, I've been dealing with that. But they, the company, I filed the first of nine, um, like, uh, not disputes, but uh, appeals. And the company released part one of the video or like part like the first video first of nine or ten so we'll see if they release all of the others and how timely that'll be and all that other junk but i feel like i can't just let them like i can't just not show these videos right i have to put these on youtube this is a religious extremist group trying to silence me trying to prevent me from criticizing them at any cost. Scientology did the same thing to me one time. So I'm pretty much ready to go through whatever it takes to settle this, to make sure that I can put these up on YouTube, just about. I'm ready to go all the way. Um, I probably won't have to like go to court or anything. I seriously doubt it. They're not that stupid. You know, if... We ended up going to court. They'd 100% for sure lose. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's what I've been dealing with lately. So <laughs> I didn't want to play God's Not Dead 2 by accident because, you know, it would cause a huge mess if I did. I'd have to go through, like, the whole copyright system again for this video. Anyway, yeah, let's get back to Tucker Carlson and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Steven Crowder. Oh, don't forget to check out my website, owenmorgan.com. I would appreciate that. Sign up for my email list. That'd be awesome. And don't forget, if you watch a video of mine, watch it beginning to end instead of just, like, jumping out at a certain point. All right. Let's keep listening. So, uh, yeah, they're engaging in the nut-picking fallacy here. Be Elon Musk for three reasons. One, because he's white, gross. Two, he's from Africa, and they're like really poor there. And three, I mean, is this this is satire, right? She's doing satire right now. This cannot be real. You can't convince me this is real. He's white. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a conservative trying to pretend to be a left winger because this makes no sense. Huh, it didn't turn off. It kept filming. It just popped up a little message. That's kind of interesting. Gross. Two, he's from Africa, and they're, like, really poor there. And three, his cars don't even work. I tried filling out my Tesla Roadster the other day, and I couldn't even find the gas hole. <laughs> yeah, this is satire. He's not even nutpicking. This is probably a conservative. And he's using this as the basis to conclude that, you know, the left is completely unhinged. This is how propaganda works. So I just poured it on the engine because, like, what else am I supposed to do? So I started a new hashtag, hashtag no more Africans, so we can get him impeached from being the president of the Senate. Anyways, until next time, bye! And by the way, keep... Yeah, I'm convinced that that was a right winger pretending to be a left winger. There, that is not real. Anyways. And but again, he's using this as the premise to claim that the left is calling for deplatforming people because they're white. Seriously. Till next time. Bye. And by the way, keep your compliments in the chat. And Nick, keep them tasteful because we understand how adorable Riley is. Okay? <laughs> We're very protective of our ladies here. Nick said gas holes. I
Oh, wait. Do they know her? Apparently they do. I don't want to hear it! There's no lefty that looks like that. No, exactly. Lefty boy. <laughs> I saw no five o'clock shadow, no giant forehead. Yeah. Somewhere. She must be a new lefty. Yeah. yeah. Wow, dude. Okay, I guess she is on the right, and they're making a joke about people on the left being ugly. Genius. That fantastic. On point. Absolutely. She is. She's from the new left. Well, she made three lefts, and so she's back right. <laughs> there you go. I think that's how it works. I don't know. I had a remote Nailed control it. car. Uh, so here's the thing. If, if Tucker's exit seems a little fishy, and we don't have all the information, you're not alone. And that brings us to, I want to kind of walk through the other instances that have been very similar to this, because the leftists said that deplatforming works. Mm -hmm. It's time for Curious Coincidences. Curious coincidences, okay. Oh, is this like a segment that he does? I don't watch his show very often, almost never. Dude, come on, get to it. Like, are they gonna... All right, here we go. Oh, it's the worst time to come back from the stinger because it's like I have a chest, I have a mm -hmm. chest burp that yeah. isn't quite there yet. But when it is, I'll just hit the, I'll just hit the button. So, let's <laughs> go, go through <laughs> coincidence. Have you noticed this, Nick? Like the 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 kind of the pattern burps. here of of uh, conservative commentators and figures who've been getting deplatformed or attacked at an increasing rate the last two months. Yeah, it lends more credence to my theory. There's ten people in a room. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight of them. Wait, what was that? Let, hang on. Let me listen one more time. Think about what he's saying here. Like the, the, the kind of the pattern he deplatformed or attacked Ugh. of uh, conservative commentators and figures who've been getting deplatformed or attacked at an increasing rate the last two months. Yeah. Let who? Who else? What other conservative talk show hosts or whatever have been like deplatformed? What's he talking about right now? It's more credence to my theory. There's 10 people in a room. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight of them are trans. One is gay and one's a Puerto Rican uh, with a full headdress. I don't know why they have donkey. to be Puerto Rican. They could be uh, Dominican. Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could be Dominican. Uh, this is definitely a global movement. Okay, yeah. I'm nervous about but, Tucker but could you, not being there. But could you acknowledge that they could be Dominican? Oh, I, yeah. It's definitely. possible. Oh, they don't have to be Puerto Rican. Fine. 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 I just, this is so stupid. I just, I, I don't feel like this is funny at all. They're trying to make jokes here. Apparently, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans are on the left. Is that the joke they're trying to tell or what? Well, look, all right. It could be Dominican. <laughs> they're busy doing other stuff. Yeah, I know. Like when they're just being when drafted. Winning the World Series. Yes, or, exactly. yes. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm just saying it could be. I just don't want to be admonished. They could be Puerto Rican. They could be Dominican. I don't know. I say Dominican. So <laughs> coincidence number one. Okay, we have Tucker. He was fired. But this comes right after uh, less than a week, I guess, after Fox part of ways with Dan Bongino. Now, I know Dan Bongino said, hey, no ill will, and, and, and that's likely true. Right. So uh, Dan Bongino did part ways with Fox News, apparently. I didn't know that guy very well, but I heard he's a nutter butter. But it, it also happens immediately after the Dominion lawsuit was settled with Fox. Fox News has to pay Dominion uh, voting systems or whatever, like 780 something million dollars. And that's a pretty big deal. I don't think think they're connected tucker's firing in the dominion thing but i guess time will tell by the by rick robin uh Cagnon, thank you so much for the super chat i appreciate that have you read son of truth and because you're my family both of these are from Bra from brave books no but i have them i have the books i have not read them yet i would love to they're on the they're on the list for sure Anyway, thank you for the super chat. I can't wait to read those. Those may be next on the list uh, to read. In fact, I may be reading them tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. I may actually be doing the reading like for my other my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. I may be doing that on Thursday instead of Wednesday. We'll see. But it it also doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. Dan Bongino, for people, whether you like him or don't like him, he's a consistent conservative. He's been a friend of the show. Yeah. The guy absolutely has a backbone. He's willing to say things that, by the way, certainly would ruffle some feathers from... Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. He's consistent in his support of KKK talking points. He's been repeating them since the 80s. Uh, he's been talking about how fantastic you know, white people are and how black people are ruining the country for a long time. 
Friend of the show. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Sort of the milk toast people on the right. So I don't necessarily. It's a pattern that you're seeing. He's with got Fox. a pretty good following too, as opposed yes. to some of the other. You know, he's here on no. Rumble actually right now. If you're right there, I'm yeah. sure there's probably a link you can watch him on on Rumble because yeah. I think he was uh, removed from YouTube not long ago. Well, and understanding that he needed another place to be able to go, it's like there you go. Absolutely, isn't uh, it Murdoch? Oh, I'm sorry. Speech. No, no, go ahead. Isn't it Murdoch's kid who's the problem? I blame it on the younger. I don't grass. Know. I mean, uh, Suzanne Scott. Get yeah. Put a fella in there. I have to be careful because you know, I was Put there for, a fella was there for four and a half like years. A, you what? Like uh, I said, she's yeah. a good broad. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and he's terrific, too. Oh, no, the I'll thing is... The thing. Dude, what are they saying? I feel like we just missed something important. What is it that Steven Crowder just said about that woman? About Dan Bongino's daughter? Or was it the Murdoch's kid? The younger I don't grass. Know. I mean... I, Suzanne Scott. Get... Yeah... Put a fella in there. I have to be careful because, you know. Suzanne Scott? Put a fella in there. And a like I, you what? Like uh, I said, she's yeah. a good bro. He dated her for four and a half years? Is that what he said? Who the hell is he talking about? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and he's terrific, too. Oh, no, the thing lot. is. Yeah, a good broad, he says. Okay. What, what the thing f- is, what am I on ABC? <laughs> no, I just no, I just said, you know, I was, I just, I don't want to get sued. Oh, I don't know. I'm I don't want to get sued, but uh, I didn't go over your briefs before. Whatever you on. just said, <laughs> yeah. So he can't be sued for anything that just happened. What are they even talking about? Defamation is such a high bar to meet. It's ridiculous. It's like the default position in the U.S. is to do absolutely nothing. You know, it's like you can. It's so difficult to be sued for defamation in the US. It's so difficult to win a copyright infringement case in some situations, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, done. for la- for culpable deniability, I didn't listen to what Nick says. I never did. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So I said deniability. He said culpable. Did did he mean plausible deniability? This is just complete nonsense, all of it. These people are ridiculous. Yes, not knowing. <laughs> but so <laughs> Coincidence number two. Uh, look, Matt Walsh was hacked last week. In case of, yeah. in case you don't know that. Which, look again. This is. Oh yeah, that was interesting. Matt Walsh was hacked, including but not limited to every email that he has ever sent or received for twenty years or some crazy thing. Oh my god, it's crazy. Uh, I'll be interested to see if something comes out of that Matt Walsh hack. But what does that have to do with Tucker? I I can't imagine the connection he's trying to build here. Matt Walsh was hacked last week, in case of, yeah. in case you don't know that. Which, look, again, this is not about who you personally like or dislike. I know there are a lot of conservatives who like Matt Walsh. Most do. I know there are a lot of people who he rubs in the wrong way. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't revel in the joy. You right. shouldn't revel in the hacking. Your, your mom rubs me the wrong way. And leaking of private information. This is a concerted effort and a violation of privacy. It's a crime. Okay, wait, 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 wait. How did we get here? I'm okay. Let's just step back and think about the the chain of events here. All right. So he says Matt Walsh was hacked. Matt Walsh was hacked. Yes, that's accurate. He was hacked. And that is a crime. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think I stand for like releasing any private data or anything like I I'm not a fan of like, yeah, I I wouldn't stand for any uh, private data being released with Matt Walsh or whatever. But how does this tie back to um, Tucker? I, I, I'm so lost. This is a concerted effort and a violation of privacy. It's a crime. Okay, let's also go to coincidence number three. Have- what coincidence? What, what's the coincidence here? I'm, I'm missing it. What happened to Tucker that is similar to Matt Walsh? What? I mean, Tucker had some of his texts released. If you're watching this five years in the future... Uh, in the Dominion lawsuit, Tucker Carlson um, had his text messages subpoenaed and stuff, basically. And they turned him over and found that he w- knew for a fact that, you know, Dominion voting systems did not, like, meddle in the election or any of that stuff. And that's how the the lawsuit was won, basically, because they established without a shadow of a doubt that it was malicious. They knew it was a lie and they were spreading it anyways. That's one of the preconditions to win a uh, defamation lawsuit. That wasn't a hack. That wasn't leaked material. That was 
public court documents. And Tucker put himself in that situation 100%. Nothing illegal about it. James O'Keefe. Was let's let's step back. Listen to that one more time. Private information. This is a concerted effort and a violation of privacy. It's a crime. Okay, let's also go to coincidence number three. If James O'Keefe was forced out from Project Veritas at the end of February, and here's the thing. Okay, that's because look, here's the problem. I, I've found the hang up. I know why this is such an issue with Tuck or with uh, Stephen Crowder. The right has a whole bunch of complete scumbags in it that's the problem james o'keefe used to deceptively edit uh videos to make situations seem like something other than what they actually were basically effectively lying about people and he ended up spending a ton of money from project veritas on his own interests and the board of Project Veritas, the company he was like the CEO for, kicked him out because he was spending obscene amounts of money on his own stuff. He's using the company's bank account as a slush fund, basically, is what it was, right? That's just scumbag behavior. If you don't like the fact that some conservatives in the movement are being like pushed out, don't bring scumbags into the movement and you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? Tucker Carlson, I don't know why he was fired, but he's an extremist and a stochastic terrorist, so he deserved to be fired. Uh, who was the other person he mentioned? It was um, James O'Keefe, Tucker. Oh, Matt Walsh. He's a domestic terrorist, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I, I, you know, Principally, I don't stand for people hacking other people and then leaking that, that hacked stuff. Um, if it's like newsworthy, then I think I could make an, an exception for it. But by and large, you know, I'm not a huge fan. Um, either way, you know, that guy's a, a domestic terrorist, like I said. So I have zero sympathy. Mr. Softlock27, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. If you look at it, again, whether you like James O'Keefe or not, it does, the worst thing it seems like he did was he maybe took someone's sandwich from the fridge. Well, and uh, he had the audacity to use a private plane to go raise millions of dollars from donors. Asshole! So he Talking about James O'Keefe? No, he did a lot more than that. He spent a ton of money. Well, why are they defending this guy? He spent a ton of, of company money on some musical production, something or other. He was just, he was using it as a slush fund, effectively. He was wasting company money. Like, how, are, how can they justify this? Seriously. You could make the trip possible. Yeah. <laughs> this that, like, come on. So this is what happens with the personalities who you have. Right. Oh my gosh. You have four there, or three that we have. Well, well you're actually missing one. Mm. You? Oh, myself? Yeah. Well, yeah this I mean, has been happening for a long pretty, time. It's, it's, it, maybe it's because it's happened for the last Yeah, five, no, all the years. leaks been, yeah, but, they always uh, happen coincidentally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you forget another one. Pat Robertson, they're pushing on him. He can oh, leg press 1,100 pounds. <laughs> wow. Pat Robertson had leaks? I don't remember any Pat Robertson leaks. I'm going to have to look into that. Oh, my God. I'm writing that down. Pat Robertson leaks. Let's see. Got it. Okay, I'm going to look into that after this. That's that's interesting. Why do so many Americans support Russia in their war against Ukraine? Even Fox News Australia called Sky supports Ukraine, even calling for more uh, calling for more Aussie tanks to go there. Most Christians outside U.S. don't believe in the rapture. Interesting. Really? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's like an evangelical thing. Um, OK, I can see that. But. Uh, like a Protestant thing and the, you know, the Puritans and the Protestants and all that kind of really got their boom in America in the early days. But anyways, uh, why do they support Russia in the war against Ukraine? I don't think there are many people that do. I think there are many evangelicals that do, though. Um, th by percentage, they probably make up 7% of the U.S., but Russia has... Uh, successfully worked their way into or created a propaganda network for 
you know, the Christian uh, evangelical people. They, Russia, like Putin, has an in with evangelicals. Putin... God, okay. You know what? I'm going to have to... Uh, let me just show you this clip real quick, okay? Give me a second. Since we're talking about this, this is a really interesting question. All right, so... There's a woman named Delora O'Brien. She's a QAnon member, right? Now, this video came out by Delora O'Brien. This came out early March 2022, maybe even late February 2022, okay? Now, that was immediately after the Ukraine war started. It was like a, a week or two after this, the war starts. Everybody, everybody in the United States was either shutting their mouth completely or supporting Ukraine. In fact, everybody in the world, they were either dead silent or supporting Ukraine. Because there's no good reason for what Russia did. None. If you stand against imperialism, you stand against Russia, basically, in this situation, right? Well, Delora O'Brien, right when this stuff starts, right when the war begins, QAnon member, by the way, she's a Q, she's a member of QAnon. She comes out there and says this. I'm not on Putin's side. I'm not on, on Zelensky's side. I'm not on Trump's side. I'm on God's side. God's side is the side of truth. It just so happens that right now, our President Trump is on the side of God. No. Also, believe it or not, so is Putin. No. No. How do you arrive at that position? This is the evidence that I needed to discover that Putin has an in with QAnon. He has, like, a connection to them, a link to them. You know, I have no clue where I'm going in this level. I'm just skipping it. Um... QAnon is effectively like an arm of the Russian government at this point. I, in my opinion, I believe that QAnon was started by Putin in the first place, basically. And he kind of pulls the lever of power behind the scenes by swaying people's beliefs and, you know, seeding these ideas here or there. Keep listening to this. Right before I came on here, this is what was sent to me. A Russian soldier, I even have his name and I, I can't give it, I'm sorry, I can't. Just research it, I'm sure it'll start coming out. Of course it never came out, it's completely made up. Um, searching for bioweapons, there was a, him and a, a, a few of his, a, a, the other soldiers. See, this is what's fascinating to me. This propaganda piece right here about Russia searching for bioweapons was not the immediate reasoning that Russia gave for why they were invading. The bioweapons thing didn't come until later. Originally, they were saying they were fighting Nazis. And then when that fell to pieces, they moved to the bioweapons thing. But listen to this. All the way back then, all the way in March of 2022, when this first, well, when the war started, she received this piece of propaganda from who? Don't know. About Russia, you know, finding bioweapons in Ukraine and all this other garbage. A searching for bioweapons in central Ukraine stumbled upon a child trafficking den. And that right there is the thing that they used to get this to really appeal to the QAnon crowd. I don't think they don't care about bioweapons. They don't care about Nazis. They don't care about any of that. But when you say child trafficking, there's just something that goes off in like a QAnoner's brain. They're like, oh, I immediately have to take a stand on this no matter what. And my, the stand that I take on whatever this issue is relating to child trafficking is going to be opposed to whatever the Democrats believe 
or think or want or whatever. Even when it comes down to child, child brides, child marriages. Democrats are opposed to child marriages. You know what that means. It means we've got to support it. Anyway, the point is QAnon is an arm of the Russian propaganda machine, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you forget another. One. Oh, so yeah, back to what back to what I was saying. Um, you asked why so many Americans support Russia in the war against Ukraine. I don't think they do. I think it's a very small percentage, but the percentage that do are loud and obnoxious and scream about it constantly, and um, and as a result, it it seems like more pronounced, like they're the ones that are you know in the majority. So, anyways, yeah. QAnon is an arm of the Russian government, and they that's why, basically. On Pat Robertson, they're pushing on him. He can leg oh, press 1,100 pounds. Wow. <laughs> what? what? Oh, yeah, someone bring up uh, the control room. Bring up no. that overlay where he's like, I leg press a, uh, uh, 1,100 <laughs> pounds, and he has knee wraps, he has wrist straps, and he's putting his hands on his leg. He's like, ah, oh, for Jesus. <laughs> That's true. He said he could only do 850. Then Jesus came into life right up to exactly. Like the... uh, what? I've never heard of this before. He turned his, he turned his water into pre workout. This is a <laughs> monster drink. <laughs> <Like, Hercules, Hercules. laughs> Jesus gave me a spot. Yeah. And for recovery, his final miracle, the never ending possible at Olive Garden. <laughs> old people love Bob Evans at Olive Garden. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, dude. It's not just old people. I love Bob Evans. I haven't had Bob Evans in a hot minute. I should, like, you know what's sad? Like, New York City is an incredible place, but there are some chains that are really amazing, like Bob Evans. I, there is no Bob Evans here that I know of. There's also no Sonic Drive-In. Oh, my God, dude. I love Sonic Drive-In, and, and I, like, almost never have them because there just there isn't one. I think there's one on Long Island, but that's, like, really far away from me. So, anyway. Oh, Russia today made a public offer to Tucker. I saw that. I saw that. That doesn't surprise me at all. I'm surprised that they made it public. I feel like it probably would have been a better idea to keep it quiet. But <laughs> Tucker is very obviously a Russian agent. If not a Russian agent, then at the very least a useful idiot. Somebody who carries water for Russia, does things for Russia, and spreads their propaganda for them, at the very least. No one in the world supports Russia. You need to seriously look into the Chinese propaganda where children in uh, children chant in classrooms supporting Russia. Us Orthodox Christians don't believe in literal hell. I mean, I meant immediately after the war started. Everybody either supported Ukraine or were silent. Like, China didn't say a word uh, for a while. Eventually, China came out against, or came out in favor of Russia, of course. But, yeah, um, it took a while. And, like, uh, uh, what, uh, what was it, 160 countries out of 192, maybe, voted against Russia continuing their war? And um, the others either voted present or I think two of them voted like in favor uh, or voted in favor of the war against Ukraine. Something like that. I don't remember now. It's been a while. Anyway, thank you guys for the super chats. Appreciate it. Blue plate special. Baby. So Tucker Bongino, although that wasn't really a hack, obviously. Matt yeah. Walsh hacked. James O'Keefe ousted. You. Uh, yeah. And then Did you notice how he slipped that in. He says the. Bongino Tucker hack although it wasn't a hack no it wasn't so what's the coincidence here he's trying to like convince us that there are too many coincidences that this should be like raise red flags there's no coincidence now uh, you have a coincidence number four Tucker's oh yeah somebody says sorry I keep pausing it I'm gonna step back so we can hear the whole thing smash that like button or optionally if you choose you can press it lightly or caress it gently you don't have to smash it Sometimes smashing doesn't do the job properly, I've come to find. Sometimes poking it gently is actually preferable. And if that's the case for you, you can do that for the like button instead of smashing it. But uh, don't forget to watch the videos that I release from beginning to end, if you do watch one. 
Like, you don't, you know, I'm not going to, like, beg for views or something here. I'm just saying, if you do watch a video, try to make it to the uh, the the very end. I've, I've considered making my videos shorter also in an effort to kind of, it, because it goes by watch time percentage, apparently. Uh, I, I believe. I think that's how it works. So, anyway. James O'Keefe ousted you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you have a coincidence number four. Tucker's firing, by the way. It also comes immediately after Fox settled this uh, lawsuit with Dominion. Something else you may not know, coincidence number five. Rumble has been under relentless DDoS attacks since we've gone over. And this Okay, I don't know that any of this is true um, like about Rumble or any of that, but guess what? I mean, companies go through D DDoS attacks. That happens. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I'm not in favor of that. How does that relate to Tucker Carlson being fired? What's the coincidence here? I'm not seeing the coincidence. This is what happens rather than covering the numbers, rather than covering what actually happens, you know, this monumental shift. Notice you don't really see it at places like Media Matters or yeah. Daily Beast. What happens is what there are attacks want? behind the scenes, like yesterday, where the view counter was like Ed Rooney's attendance computer went. Beep, 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 beep. So, Rumble, and here's the beauty of Rumble, though, they understand this and they're building it out so they are dependent on no one else. That just takes more time. Uh, yeah. But they have been. What, are you trying to tell me Rumble is currently building a DDoS protection network like Cloudflare or something? That would take an absurd amount of time and money. I can't imagine that they're actually trying to do that. Uh, although it, it would make sense that, like, I would be willing to bet that Cloudflare won't work with Rumble or something, or can't for one reason or another. Um, I can't imagine, like, video sharing networks or whatever, you know, are easy to create um, DDoS protections for been subject to relentless DDoS attacks. Hopefully today... By the way, if you don't know what DDoS is, just a brief, like, 15-second explanation. It's basically where, um, like, when you go to a website, you are sending a request to that server. Like, hey, can you send me this web page? I want to look at it. And the server runs the program to send you a copy of the source code that belongs, you know, to that website or whatever. Uh, so a DDoS attack is when you get a network of like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of computers or basically of requests all hitting the server at the same time. And when it does that, parts of the server kind of fall apart. Like it, it starts prioritizing certain programs over others because it can't keep up with all the requests and it makes it vulnerable to hacks makes it easier to kind of access stuff if everything is kind of falling apart now servers well server administrators have gotten pretty good at protecting against that stuff by like banning ip addresses if they request the same website more than like two or three times within like a minute right but that's why hackers will find cheap easy targets just little websites around oh. just little websites around that you know don't have much protection or aren't that elaborate or don't have fantastic security and they'll hack into them because they're simple and now they have a node that they can use to send a, a request through a DDoS attack, basically. That's how DDoSing works. And Cloudflare is a network that can absorb up to like, I don't know, 100,000 or something, maybe a million different like DDoS nodes simultaneously. I don't even remember. They advertise it on their website. And they'll work with just about anybody. So I, I'm not sure why rumble isn't using somebody like cloudflare that's weird more time uh yeah. but they have been subject to relentless ddos attacks hopefully today this is still up there right now it if is, you're yeah. watching hit the rumble button and uh let them know that you love them comment on rumble because it happens at least once a week where yeah. there's a concerted effort all of this at one time at what point do you say hey this is a coincidence when the left like aoc these people are saying hey deplatforming really works one side demands transparency one side precludes it yeah what are you talking about transparency what what is he even talking about right now?
nothing that he just said established the idea that the left excludes like um like transparency what does he mean the left did he say precludes it i think he said precludes transparency what does he mean what's he even referring to he didn't establish like anything to back that position up it's nonsense one side demands transparency one side precludes it yeah and you know what the guys over there so i, I was on the phone with them a lot yesterday and, and chris and his team of engineers they basically just work around the clock around the get clock. these things fixed so thank you guys for the work you're doing because look it's hard to yeah. set this up it's not hard because you have to compete that's hard enough right, right. your mom's hard it's not hard because the game's not fair. That's no. hard enough, right? It's not hard because the government's all against you and they want you to lose. It's hard because when you start to win, other people start to try to take you down. Not competing of fairly course. by attacking. Such victims, right? These poor guys, they're, they're being victimized by everybody around them. Can't people just leave these poor millionaires alone and let them repeat KKK talking points? Like, why can't people just let them do their thing without criticizing the fact that they're repeating KKK talking points. Honestly, it's just sad. That was hard. King you behind the scenes by making your tech hard, by making your life hard. Yeah. So thanks for all the work, guys. We really do appreciate it. And by the way, this is something that's very common. I was speaking with a, a, a lawyer who, who has represented some of the biggest clients in, in Hollywood. Yeah. The most common thing, let me ask you this, if you're watching, like Matt Walsh, okay? My heart really goes out to the guy. Uh, does anyone out there, does anyone out there, would you want every single one of your private texts or emails or search history to be available to the public? No, I wouldn't. I also wouldn't like it if or I wouldn't appreciate it if somebody was acting like a domestic terrorist and inspiring terrorist attacks on children's hospitals and, you know, any number of other people and things and places. I mean, Boston Children's Hospital, it is, I'm sorry, Boston Ch Children's Hospital is not the only place that Matt Walsh inspired a terrorist attack on. There are lots of them. And I also wouldn't like it if somebody was intentionally, maliciously, specifically, in my opinion, lying about the trans community, about demonizing a group of people in an effort to hurt them, to destroy them. And a matter of fact, Matt Walsh not too long ago said in a video... If you're disturbed by the things that I say about the trans community, you should hear what I don't say about the trans community, not publicly. Something to that effect. I need to find that clip. I saw it recently, and yeah, I need to figure out where it is so I have a copy of it. But I don't want anybody to be hacked. I don't want my private texts going out. I also don't want anybody to act like a terrorist. Unfortunately, we don't live in a world of what is the there's a saying here isn't there um oh god what's the saying what there's something really funny right uh if we lived in a world of likes and haves something something i don't remember anyway we don't live in a world that we don't live in a world like that unfortunately so no. Think about that. Now, that doesn't mean you're doing anything illegal. No! But don't you... <laughs> no, no, no! It's not like Tom like, no, no, guys, no! Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a violation of your privacy. There are people. So there was a celebrity. This is another part of the propaganda, what he's doing here. He is focusing on Matt Walsh's bad luck or the hard situation he's found himself in, which is having his text messages sent out rather than focusing on the fact that he's a domestic terrorist. Seriously, look into internal Chinese propaganda about Russia. It's really bad and lie to the rest of the world about neutrality. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I don't even think that they're lying about neutrality anymore, are they? I think they came out. China did not too long ago and kind of voiced their support of russia or what was it or maybe it was that they 
sent a bunch of supplies to Russia, something like that. I don't remember now, but yeah, it's not good. I agree, hundred percent. How about kissing the like button? You can do that as long as the computer registers the click. I think that's fine. Yeah, kissing would work too. Let me know how the like button um, likes that. Everybody, uh, an A-list female star. This is a story that was uh, related. Really Air rules out Kathy Griffin. Go ahead. Yes, it does. Paris Hilton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. You're probably in like we're in Deborah <laughs> Winger territory until like two years ago. Okay, I'm sorry. I think I missed that. Let's step back a little. Uh, an A-list female star. This is a story. Hold on. It's a violation of your privacy. There are people. So there was a celebrity, uh, an A-list female star. This is a story that was uh, related. Air rules out Kathy Griffin. Go ahead. Yes, it does. Paris Hilton. <laughs> okay. A-list celebrity. Why are they taking shots at like these people? I don't get it. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You're probably in like we're in Deborah Winger territory until like two years in. Deborah. Like, oh, this is not nearly as <laughs> we, bet, we, we bet on the wrong person. She's no Annette Benning. Um, so this was a, this was a top star. Someone broke into this person's house. This is pre-internet. Stole nude pictures. Oh, that's right. You told stole me nude pictures yeah, yeah. of this woman and was going to reveal them to the public. Now, here's the thing. That's a crime. But the person who did this was so confident that this celebrity would rather forego the embarrassment of nude pictures being released that she would settle rather than prosecute the crime. This happened. Sure, sure. I can see that. I mean, I don't know what story he's referring to. He's not giving us specific names, but OK. I mean, this this hypothetical. I can see this happening. Happens all the time. Shit. And I don't know about happening all the time, but OK, I can see this being a, a plausible story. Takedowns of people in positions of, of, of power, certainly uh, public positions, happen all the time. And I think that Matt Walsh was smart, by the way, to say, I was hacked, because you know what they were going to try and do. Yeah. I think that Tucker Carlson saying, hey, look, this is what's going on. It removes a lot of those teeth, but you just need to know that that's what happens all the time in Rumble, basically being held hostage by, hey, if you're too successful, we're going to keep DDoSing attacking you. Uh, D Okay, people get DDoSed all the time. What's he talking about? He's acting like this is the first time in history anybody has ever been DDoSed. Like, I've been DDoSed before. It's really not that uncommon, although it's a lot harder to get away with it now because when a DDoS attack happens, uh, companies like usually server farms, like a AWS, Amazon's web services... Usually they will like track, you know, the DDoS systems that were used and they will alert the owners of the servers, the nodes, and tell them you've got a hack, you need to clean it up. Um, but yeah, I, I've been DDoS, like this isn't that rare. What's he talking about? DDoS. He's acting like this is a point of persecution for all conservatives. Like, they're so mistreated because conservatives are the only ones that ever get DDoS. Help me out. Denial of service tactics where they overload servers, they hack in behind. It's kind of an umbrella term. Point yeah. is, they're being hacked. They get that at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. It's not really an umbrella term. It's very specific. There's a specific meaning behind this. But, okay, he doesn't want to explain it right now, I guess. We're going to keep DDoSing attacking you. Uh, DDoS, help me out. Denial of service tactics where they overload servers, they hack in behind. It's kind of an umbrella term. Point yeah. is, they're being hacked. They get that at a restaurant. Yeah, Bob Evans. <laughs> <laughs> the early bird special. Where you can it stands for distributed denial of service, DDoS. Some people call it DDoS, and that bothers me like nothing else. You can go, you can get a stack of pancakes and hear the N-word relentlessly Bob around wow. you. Really? Jesus. Yeah, Bob Evans. You got the address? Well, only until <laughs> 10 a.m., though. Then they outlaw the N-word yes, after that. Yes, that's true. They, well, no, it's just it's just said in code. Ah, well. But they're yeah. too loud, so they don't say it in code. They still yeah. just say it. By the way, can I admonish you really quickly? Can we get an admonishment coming? What happened? Yeah. Pat Robertson actually leg pressed 2,000. So oh, my word. Do we have the video or the picture? I don't, I don't know if we have an overlay or something. Hootie? What? Nothing? Where are you guys going with this one? You don't have your microphone anywhere near your door. Hootie, do you have the picture? Have you done this before? <laughs> yeah, we have a picture here. Uh, did Pat Robertson leg press 2,000 pounds? This is an article written in 2006. According to the CBM website, Robertson worked his way up lifting a ton with the help I of I don't care condition. what some article says. Do we have a picture of the old oh, man breaking his hip? So we have this as well. <laughs> when he was 73. Oh, okay. So 40 years ago? Okay, here we go. Yeah, Pat Robertson, I think, isn't he like 93? I think he's 93. Um, wait, is this, this is 06? He was 73 in 06, is that true? Let's see. How old is Pat Robertson? No need to wonder, just loaded up our question gun. Let's go answer hunting. 93, yep, he's 93 years old, wow.
That is old. I hope I live to be that old. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, of this well, extraordinary. Well, there, oh, there it is. Still? Oh, is this, oh. the, this is, you can see that. Yeah, I can't see. It was see. a monstrous Nothing. amount of weight on that thing. But you, you measured yeah. the 2,000. You measured the 2,000 pounds. His range of movement was like time. a half well, look, I guarantee you that he did it. He took his miracle water and, Come on. you know, it worked. Yeah, Why it, do you need that? By the way, a leg press is not a real lift, okay? If you can lift 2,000 pounds, I might as well lift it with a yeah. forklift. I'm the strongest man yeah, in the world. Exactly. Yeah, I don't believe I don't believe this. It seems like they're even skeptical of this. I'm I'm just having a hard time believing it. Also shit himself. They don't show that quick. Exactly. Yeah. You this is one big glorified the... gorilla campaign for the Pence. He had the opportunity. God was listening closely. I know God hears us all. Don't get me wrong here, but God was listening closely enough to Pat Robertson that he used it on lifting 2,000 pounds. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. save The some Lord kids. helped me leg press 2,000 pounds. Then he parted my red cheeks. He's like, never mind. The star- Dude, why? This is terrible. <laughs> still timing. funny. I'm You're 98. It's still funny. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right. You guys can comment below. This has been Curious Coincidences. Yeah, okay. So I guess that's the end of it. Um, that made no sense. But you know what I find particularly interesting about this whole thing? Uh, so well, let's see. I think I started at yeah, it was about 53 minutes into the video. Again, we're going to watch the entire thing beginning to end tomorrow. There's a lot more to this. In the beginning, he talks about, oh boy, he talks about blackmail and extortion by Candace Owens. Oh, it's going to be interesting. So give this a look. If you missed this, if you're watching this the next day and the live stream already happened, don't sweat it. Go to my website, owenmorgan.com. I have all of my stuff aggregated there. So just search for like Steven Crowder. Video should pop up. I mean, it may not be edited and cleaned up yet. So depending on when you see this, it may not be available yet. But within the next, you know, week, certainly it'll it should be uploaded there. Anyways, yeah, he talks about like, oh, he gets nervous and stuff. He talks about his divorce. Apparently he's getting divorced. It's crazy. So give that a listen. Uh, 1030 a.m. Wednesdays and Thursday mornings, every Wednesday and Thursday. Although this week is complicated because I'm meeting up with a YouTuber friend that's coming to the area, but that's neither here nor there. Um, What I find interesting about this whole thing, though, is that 55 minutes is roughly when this starts, 54 minutes, and we just made it to an hour and seven minutes. So 12 minutes, right? That's 12 minutes that we spent listening to this guy. And half the time, he wasn't even talking about Tucker Carlson. He devoted an entire segment to Don Lemon. It was nonstop talking about Don Lemon. I think, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe? He's talking about Don Lemon being removed from CNN. And he devoted a fraction of a 12-minute segment to Tucker Carlson. And it was at the end. That's fascinating, right? Fascinating how they kind of protect their own. Uh, with abs- like, There's no reason to even do that. Like, If somebody does something wrong, you should be able to call them out. If somebody doesn't do something wrong, you shouldn't have this bizarre obsession with hating them. The way that he seems to have this obsession with hating anybody to the left of hunting the homeless for sport. It's just crazy, dude. Anyways, yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Also, don't forget to smash the like button. Follow me over to my Telltale and Filtered YouTube channel. Link in the description to see the rest of this tomorrow. A couple more things. Check out my website, owenmorgan.com. Watch my videos beginning to end if possible. And finally, thank you, Jonna Funkhauser, for the uh, sticker. Stampede122 said it once already. Pat Robertson is a dino at this point. Oh, 100%, dude. Again, I wish I could live to this age. Like, this guy was alive when segregation was still in effect. In fact, he was preaching and probably owned a ministry when segregation... He probably segregated his congregation. I'd be surprised if he didn't. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Anyways, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. Appreciate it. Don't forget to smash that like button, and I will see you guys... Or gently caress it. Whatever you guys think. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. If not tomorrow morning, I will see you next week, okay? All right, thank you, everybody. 
See you next time. That's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And take a look at my YouTube channels. Owen Morgan, where I talk about religious issues. Telltale Fireside Chat, where I talk about politics. Telltale Unfiltered, where I do long-form breakdowns of stuff like this. And Telltale Reads, where I read books by televangelists and others. I release everything in parts, but every part stands independently of the last. So you can jump in anywhere, and I'll make sure it makes sense. You can find some ad-free 